What's your thoughts then on this set of data? So just to recap, we've had uh, fixed investment for January to May, retail sales for the month of May, and industrial output for the month of May, and all of those numbers coming in below the estimates. They all show growth, of course, year on year, because, of course, of the type of year that 2020 was. But how does this sit with you, this, uh, this slew of data below estimates? Hi, good morning, Anna. Thanks for having me. Well, I think the data shows that there's still recovery, and still growth, uh, but the pace of that is disappointing and that has slowed. And I think that that is in line with our expectation because a lot of that strong growth was boosted by stimulus last year and also from the very strong export activities and industrial activities. But that has started to fade this year as the world economy recovers and reopens. So this is in line with our expectation. And we also think that the slowing down in aggregate financing and the M2 in China also contributed to the slower activity. And that is actually in line with what the central bank and authorities are trying to do. They're trying to curb that overheating in the economy because we are already seeing higher inflation, whether you're talking about producer prices or the uh, actual inflation. So this is in line with our expectation. But overall speaking, growth in China is still pretty decent. And really, it will be in, uh, in line. And actually, that 6% uh, percent target uh, by the government, it, it should be pretty reachable. OK, so the growth target is still reachable, uh, Janet, which, of course, gets a lot of focus. But you suggest then that this disappointment in this data has something to do with tighter policy, uh, a tightening of, of, of uh, what monetary policy in China. What is it that you think that the uh, Chinese authorities are doing that, that has the impact of, of causing this data to disappoint? Yeah, I think it's the overall credit condition. Um, basically, I mean, Chinese activities is very much, uh, you can say, state directed. The, the um, Chinese, uh, the national banks, they, they have the quotas to lend out, and that has been tightened from what we see in the aggregate financing data, and that directly would have a, a, an impact on the economy. That, that lag is shorter than that in the developed market, so that, that we already see in the data. And also the government and the authorities, they are concerned about the leverage in the system. So we're talking about the, the financial system here, where we, we see that actually the leverage in the stock market, or whether you're talking about the housing market, has picked up during the pandemic because of easy liquidity conditions. And there are clear signs that the authorities are trying to slow that, right? And also, of course, what we you, you have been talking about in your news headline is the, the China is trying to also curb commodity prices by releasing uh, precious uh, metals and industrial metals reserves. So I think all these signs suggest to us that the government is pretty serious in trying to curb that leverage and overheating in the markets and also in the real economy. Yes, if you see if you see the Chinese authorities concerned about speculation in real estate and concerned about speculation in commodity prices, Janet, uh, and they try to damp down on that, where does that money go? Does it then go into equity markets? Does it go into other Chinese assets? Yeah, I think the overall tightening in the liquidity conditions will discourage people from having more speculative activity. So uh, that leverage should come down. And we all know that the stock market is highly volatile driven by retail activity, and that significantly has been driven by leverage. So um, I think that you know, for, for Chinese, uh, that, that liquidity is, is likely going to be absorbed domestically. There's still you know, quite significant and stringent capital control. And uh, I think that uh, it, it could be potentially going back to the uh, housing market that is perceived to be uh, one of the more safer havens um, than the stock market, which has been you know, doing pretty poorly at the moment. Um, and I also think that the uh, Chinese government bond market is offering you know, quite decent yield, and that should attract more uh, attention for, for investors as well. But I think the stock market could suffer more in the short term because of the momentum is fading and that leverage is going down.